I've heard people say, uh, make the comment that by gearing a ministry towards a certain age demographic mm-hmm. or, or group that you are making a silo ministry and mm-hmm. that it's that ministry is not really contributing to the full life of the church. Right. What What's your response to that kind of, of thought and mentality, uh, specifically around young adult ministry? Well, it, it certainly pertains to young adult ministry. I actually think it relates to any ministry, though, because one of the challenges we face in our own local setting is when you're talking about children's programming or you're talking about youth programming or you're talking about young adult programming or you're talking about senior programming or you're talking about worshiping budget and all that. There's always that challenge of the siloing effect happening. And so one of the things we spend a lot of time doing is reminding ourselves that it, it's not about any one of those silos. Each one of those individual areas is supposed to contribute to the wider whole. So for us as churches, if we're talking about transformation in the world and making disciples for Jesus Christ, our children should be doing that, mm. our youth should be doing that, our worship should be doing that, our young adults should be doing that. How, you know, why can't you just incorporate young adults into what you already have? Why do they need their own small group or their own Sunday school class? Like, what, right. what, why is it that important? Yeah, uh, you know, I, th- I think you can. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with whatever you have currently set up trying to invite young adults into. But st- stop and think for a second what we're even saying when we ask that question. We have something set up. We expect you to come to us and be part of what we're doing. It's completely focused on us. Mm-hmm. It's completely focused on yeah. us being serviced instead of asking the question, what can we do to go out and create new spaces or go out and meet young adults or connect with them or build a relationship with them? It completely needs to be inverted. So is it possible for young adults to come into what we currently have? Sure. I mean, I don't know why you couldn't have a small group that does that or a a Sunday school group. But I think it's a much bigger issue than that, which is, yet again, in the church, we expect people to come to us. That's not who we're called to be as disciples. We're called to go out to them and do whatever we can to reach them, relate to them, serve them, again, love them. Uh, so to me, just it just needs to be completely inverted. It's not even about young adults coming to what we already have. It's about how can we go out and serve and love and get to know them. So, and that's you know, it goes back to the beginning of what you were saying earlier about it's a change of heart, mm-hmm. and and it's a change and move from inward focus to outward focus is, right. is what I'm hearing. And say a church has decided to do that. They they have ask those hard questions, they have walked through that that difficulty of discerning why we want and who we want. And right. this is, they've said, okay, we're gonna go and we're gonna reach out and we're gonna love young adults. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna be there and we're gonna, we're gonna have this open space for them. Where do you begin? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've, you've, you've just done that discernment process, now what? Right. I think once that happens, and it's not just an attitude or heart shift, it's also a mindset shift. And so once, again, I think that hard part is plowing through our hearts and our Mm -hmm. attitudes, but if that's genuinely occurring and if our prayers are genuinely ones of hunger Mm -hmm. and love for these young adults and aren't yet there, then you start to have conversations in your church in general, but in your leadership group specifically about, okay, what can we do to make this begin to happen? And that can be, there's a whole variety of things. I mean, it can be something as simple as your leadership team in your church, each one of them committing to finding one young adult that they will either begin to pray for on a daily basis, begin to be intentional to seek out a relationship with, commit to taking out to eat once a week, (laughs) once a month, come have coffee, whatever. Uh, That doesn't cost anyone any money, I mean, at least from a church budget standpoint. Um, you know, we always think everything costs money, and, and sometimes it does, lots of times it does, but I think in this case, it doesn't have to be that. So again, what can we intentionally do to build relationships mm-hmm. with young adults and begin at an individual level? Then you can start to ask some more corporate questions for your church as a whole. Do we have any space that's a safe place, an authentic place for young adults? If the answer is yes, how do we improve it? If the answer is no, how do we create it? Oh, people say, well, I, we don't have space for that. Well, then how important is it? We, we always find space for that which is important to us. Mm. And so if we're saying well, we just don't have the space, then what we're really saying is it's just not that important to us, which then takes us back to the heart issue. Um, and then beyond that, in creating space is one thing. When possible, yeah, it would be great to hire someone or one of your staff give at least a portion of their time 
to young adults in ministry there. If you can't afford a staff person, find a volunteer who has this heart and says, this is what I'm passionate about, and then set them free. Don't make them jump through 50 hoops of church councils <laughs> and you know, approval for this and that. They say, go to it. We empower you to make this happen and let that go. And then as, as best you can in the church as a whole, have conversations to say, it's gonna look and feel different than how we've done it in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll have ideas and ways of doing things that we haven't done before, and so, and, but it's okay. In fact, let's mm -hmm. celebrate it, let's welcome it. But I think those are the ways that you start to spiral it out. And again, it, at every church council meeting, bring it up, pray about it, talk about it. At every SPRC meeting or trustee meeting, in sermons, in Sunday school groups, just flood the whole church talking about it and starting to give direction to it and move from an individual level to more corporate levels where you can create those spaces and hopefully build those relationships. And relationship building is so key for young adults. It, it's so yeah. pivotal for understanding how to engage and develop ministry with young adults. Yeah. And I think sometimes part of the issues that come up is we ask these questions of young adults and sometimes those questions sound accusatory mm -hmm. or uh, you know demeaning in some way. What can we do as leaders? What can leaders do to be more careful about how they phrase questions of, you know, what do you need for ministry? That's not exactly the kind of question right. we want to be asking. Right. How, how do you make those questions more inviting rather than, mm -hmm. I, I, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, right, right. Uh, I, mean, I guess the word there is authentic. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, I'm going to sound in some ways like a broken record. <laughs> I, I think, again, it comes back to our own hearts. I mean, why am I asking you a question? Why am I sitting down? Is it... Is it just a mechanical, find out your needs, we'll provide them? Mm. Or is it, I really want to get to know you. This is an area I don't know anything about. I want to learn from you. Mm. I care about you. I'll do whatever I can to, to be in relationship with you. I think if that's our heart's intent, then the right questions and the tone of those questions are going to come out. Mm. Because uh, I heard a while back, and I think it's really true, that current generations of kids and now young adults, I mean, they are like the best BS detectors because <laughs> they they have been raised with advertisements and every strategy you can think of to sell things. They know immediately like if someone's being false or not. I was just laughing the other day. One of my own kids, who's not even that old yet, said, Dad, they're just trying to get us to buy that product. I'm like, yeah, they yeah. are. That's the whole point, you know? Yeah. So there's a there's a finely tuned awareness among young adults as if someone's being authentic or if they have ulterior motives. And so the questions we ask, they're gonna come from from where our hearts are at. And so in my case, uh, this is something I genuinely want to learn about. And, and truthfully, I'm very ignorant. I mean, I, I don't know enough about young adults, so I need them to teach me. So when, I, when I'm with a young adult, I, I look forward to it genuinely, not to come and ask questions that I think I already know the answer to, mm. but actually I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so enlighten me, help me out here, tell me what to do. And uh, you know, we just kind of move from there. And I, I think young adults, I think they pick up on that, that you know, they're not kids. They're, like, I'm not just trying to placate them, but mm. I have something to learn and you have something to teach me. And if, I think if we come with that spirit, then that's reflected in the questions we ask and more specifically that attitude behind it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's so relational. I mean, just yeah. everything that you're talking about is just developing that relationship. Which again, I mean, that sounds so easy, but I think right. we give lip service to that. But yet when we get back to Jesus, like that, that's what the foundation of his ministry is on. Right. It's a relationship, relationship, relationship. And I almost feel like we hear that and we're like, well, yeah, 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 really? but then what do we do? And I just sort of want us to stop sometimes and be like, no, that, that stop relationship. Because think about it in our churches, how often do we really go out and intentionally try to build relationships out of love? Mm. Truthfully, not very often. Yeah. And I think that's what, I mean, that, to me, that's what the key is when we talk about young adults. And it's, I've been in situations, gone visiting churches, I've been the young adult in the congregation and walked in and, you know, there's four of us there and <clears throat> you, obviously I'm new, like tattooed <laughs> on my forehead. And there have been people who've just come up and, oh, we're so excited you're here. It's great for you to be here. We have all these things that you could be a part of. And, and it then almost becomes overwhelming and mm -hmm. kind of almost off-putting to, to the extent that 
oh my gosh, we need you. Right. And, and we're going to come get you. Right. Um, so what's that balance between showing that you want to be in relationship and, you know, mm. pouncing? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's almost like the, uh, a detector goes off when you come in in those situations. Right. You know, like, there's the new one, fresh blood, you know, right. pounce on them kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I think you certainly want to show excitement and appreciation for young adults in that situation. But again, you just said it yourself. If there's that feeling of we need, then yet again, it's not really about the young adults. It's about mm -hmm. us and our wants and our needs. And like I said a little bit ago, young adults have finely tuned you know, detectors <laughs> of what's authentic and what's not. And they'll know almost immediately if you're seeking them out out of sense of desperation that you have or if you genuinely care and love them. So I think one of the ways that you address that or we address that is that, yes, on a Sunday morning or in a worship time, it's great to show appreciation, but it's easy in that one hour when everyone's there to do that. What are we doing any other hour or time of the week? Hmm. Again, when we meet them on Sunday morning, hey, is there a time we can get together later this week? Um, or, you know, you know, obviously wouldn't say that to the first person walking <laughs> in, but that you've never had a relationship with. Right. Um, but, you know, being careful in the service that they might be a part of to say w what parts of our service speak to them, what parts don't, and begin to change that. Ask them questions generally of, you know, not just, hey, it's so great to see you, but uh, how was your experience today? What did you love? What did you not like? What did you resonate with? What did you not resonate with? Um, if they're in college, you know, do you have everything that you need? <laughs> is your family close by? You mm, know, can, yeah. can, and then if the answer is no, you know, what do you need during the week? I mean, we might be able to get you a meal. Or, I mean, you just begin with, again, questions, trying to get to know, and the answers, I think, begin to reveal themselves. But again, it's, you're shifting it. You're, we're doing the best we can. It, it's about the young adult and their needs, mm -hmm. not me and my needs, that we have to be here with us. Mm -hmm. And hopefully as we do that, they won't feel suffocated <laughs> in those, those moments. Great. Yeah.